All right, today I'm gonna to talk about the GED math test. I'm gonna give you a basic introduction, talk about some of the statistics about the test, talk about some of the topics you can expect the test to cover. Um, I'll talk about what kind of a test this isn't and what are some things that it would help you to familiarize yourself with before you take the test. And at the end, I will go over a typical math question um, so that by the end of the video, you should have a okay sense of what to expect when you take this test. All right, so let's talk about some of the big picture statistical stuff about the test. It is the second longest of the four tests. It's 115 minutes. There's about 45 questions, 45-ish. There are two sections to the test. One is pretty short, five questions maybe, and you can't use a calculator for that. The longer section, most of the test, you can use a calculator for. There's a short break between sections, and they'll give you scratch paper or um, dry erase board, something where you can make, make some notation to try to solve this stuff. This test has the lowest passing rate. This is sort of unsurprising. Um, of the four tests, it's, it's got the, the lowest one. The highest is uh, science. And it usually costs 30, 40 bucks. Uh, it depends where you live. You can go to the GED site and look up how much it costs in your state. So what it covers, there are four major sections of math. There's basic math, there's geometry, there's basic algebra, and there's graphs and functions. And I'm about to go medium deep into each of these. I'm gonna talk about some of the subcategories that you can expect to find. I'll also post all of these bullet points in the description, so if you wanted to like jump ahead and try the practice problem at the end or talk about some of the tips that I'm gonna get to, you're welcome to do that. Um, but I think it would be worthwhile to go medium deep into uh, each of these topics. So let's take basic math first. What can you expect on the basic math part of the test? Well, you'll be expected to be able to manipulate whole numbers and fractions and decimals. Um, you'll need to know squares, square roots, cubes, and cube roots, what those are, how to recognize them, what they do. Exponents, I don't know why I put an exclamation point there. I guess I just got excited. Uh, how to manipulate them, how to add them and subtract exponents, what they do. Um, whenever you see a denominator that is zero, you'll need to know that that means that the expression is undefined and it, you can't do stuff with it. It just sort of breaks the calculator. They love number lines and they love absolute value. So you'll need to be familiar with what that notation looks like and what it means. Um, miles per hour, dollars per pound, unit rates, uh, are, there'll, be, there'll be questions about those things. Ratios, proportions, and percents, you'll need to know all of those or some of those or the basic idea behind them. And um, the last thing is least common multiple or greatest common factor. Now, I should say that I'm not going to teach you these things in this video. This is just an overview of what this means. There are lots and lots of um, YouTubers who do an excellent job, starting with Khan of Khan Academy. Uh, he's got all this stuff on there. Math Antics is another popular one. But any of these that um, are, you see these and you think like, oh, I don't know what least common multiple is, there's lots of places you can go besides this video to teach yourself. All right, let's talk about geometry. What can you expect to find on the geometry part of the test? Area and perimeter of two-dimensional shapes. So um, know what area and perimeter are. Um, when someone gives you the area or a perimeter, you should be able to figure out what the length of a side of a triangle or a rectangle or another polygon is. Um, area and circumference of a circle. Bar graphs, circle graphs, dot plots, and histograms. So basically ways that you take a bunch of numbers and try to make them make sense visually. Volume and surface area of three-dimensional shapes. So basically like the area and perimeter of triangles and rectangles and all that stuff except in three dimensions. So you're looking at volume instead of surface area. Um, mean, median, mode, and range, what that means, and then sort of work backwards if you're given a median to figure out like what the missing piece of your data set is. Finally, probability. If um, I pick a random card from a deck, what is the chance it's going to be a heart? That sort of thing. Although that's 
way easier than the question on the test will be. Basic algebra. That looks like translating algebraic expressions to English and vice versa. So if someone, it's like word problems. We'll talk a little bit more about word problems in a minute, but translation between math and English is like pretty essential and shows up definitely in the algebra part of the test. Um, linear equations, like y equals 2x minus 1, you probably won't see it in that form. It'll probably be disguised in a word problem. So you'll have to translate it and then solve it. Inequalities, which are like linear equations, but have the greater than or less than sign. And you'll also have to translate from word problem to math and back. Quadratic equations. Um, this is, quadratics I think are probably the most difficult thing that you'll encounter in the test, and you probably won't encounter more than one per test. So if you know it, great. If not, that's probably okay. Um, you'll need to know what to do with polynomials to add, subtract, multiply, divide, and factor them. Um, there are some examples there. Simplify or factor those polynomials. Um, and that's it. For graphs and functions, you'll need to know how to graph a linear equation. You'll need to know slope of a line. Um, they, there will typically be one slope question per test, maybe more. Slope intercept formula, um, y equals mx plus b. Evaluating a function so that they'll give you um, an equation looking thing and say when x equals a certain number, what is y going to be equal to? You're also going to need to look at tables and graphs and dis uh, descriptions and equations and be able to um, translate between them. So like if uh, a graph shows a line that looks like this, which of these tables is a good data set that um, would make that shape on a graph? They also are fond of asking, um, is this really a function? Uh, so if there's like a, basically if there are two values of x for a y, it doesn't, it's not a function. It won't make sense in function land. Um, and that's something that you can go deeper to in a, a different YouTube video. But if it's, if the line um, doesn't sort of go left to right smoothly, there's like a weird part where it just kind of doesn't make sense. That's not a function. That was a pretty vague and not wonderful description of functions, but um, I'm going to forgive myself and move on. Okay, here are some things to not worry about. Unfortunately, there's not a ton of stuff on this math test that you don't need to worry about. It's not like the other three reading comprehension tests. Um, fortunately, you don't have to worry about trigonometry or most of the stuff in Algebra 2 or Calculus. Um, Definitely not calculus. We're like miles away from calculus. Most of the stuff on this test is like eighth or ninth grade math, um, maybe into 10th grade. But um, abstract pure math is also not something you need to worry about. There's a little star, a little asterisk there, because sometimes what I mean by abstract or pure math is just sort of like solve this equation for x, and then you just solve the equation for x. There is a little of that, but it's mostly um, putting math into English and hoping that you can figure out what they're asking. So they'll sort of like, it's like a pigs in a blanket where the pig, the hot dog, is the math, but it's wrapped in a, the dough of um, real world language. I don't, I'm sort of, I stopped myself there with that weird metaphor, but um, moving on. You, the one thing that's great that you don't have to worry about is that you won't have to memorize any formulas at all. If there's a mathematical formula that you need, it will be on this math formula sheet that they will give you. Um, there's nothing, if it's not on there, you don't need to know it. And what this looks like, if you sort of like zoom in, there'll be a question, they'll give you um, a line and they'll tell you where it crosses the y-axis and, um, or and they'll give you the slope and they'll sort of expect you to solve some sort of math uh, question from that. And they won't tell you that it's the y equals mx plus b over here. Um, you'll have to figure that out, but they will give you y equals mx plus b, so you won't need to remember it. Or if you just need to find the slope of a line or they give you um, two points on a line and they ask you to find the slope, this is the formula you'll need. And they'll give you the formula, but they won't tell you to use it. So you'll need to figure that out for yourself. 
What is this test? Well, this is literally called the mathematical reasoning test. So it is a test where they want you to kind of figure stuff out. Um, it's not like you've studied polynomials for a month and now it's a test on polynomials. It's a lot more broad than that and it requires you to do some problem solving. Um, there's lots of word problems where you have to translate between math and English. Um, and you'll have to apply concepts that aren't necessarily things that you can just straight up memorize. You'll need to reason through this stuff. That's why it's called mathematical reasoning. It also covers a wide range of math skills. So it's sort of like your final exam for ninth grade um, in that it will cover a ton of stuff. Uh, there's really no way around that. I wish, I wish it were easier, but there's a reason that this has the lowest passing rate. And um, I don't want to like, you know, make it seem like it's an impossible test, but it, if you've watched this far into the video, you just saw me break down four topics with a lot of subtopics. There's a lot that you need to, to master or have an idea about at least for this test. So there are some things that it will help you to know that will improve your chances of passing the test. Um, the first is, we've been talking about this, translating math to English and back again. So um, if you know that when you see the word difference in a word problem that it means subtraction, great, you will need that. Or if you hear a problem that says, you know, 20% of the soccer team uh, were boys, then you know you need to multiply the total number of people on the soccer team by 20%. That's a multiplication problem. And there's more sort of like words that are important to know to translate basic math to English, and you can look those up online. There are also, especially for the first part of this test where you can't use a calculator, there are some common fractions that you'll have to know what they mean in decimal language or percent language. So for example, one half you should know is 0.5 or 50% um, or what a third is or what a quarter is or three quarters or two thirds. All of those are like things that if you don't know off the top of your head, you should study. They will help you on the test. Finally, you should know what the TI-30XS is and how it works. It's this, it's this um, calculator that you will get to use on the test. It'll be on screen, you can use their on-screen calculator. You can bring one with you to a testing center if you physically have one, it's like 15 bucks, you can get it, Walmart or Amazon. And it will help you knowing how to use it when you go in. So there are some tutorials, some, some videos you can watch that will familiarize you with how the calculator works. So how to prepare, this slide is the same as the other um, for the social studies and science and RLA test, but it's basically take the GED Ready test on the GED website. It's the best way to familiarize yourself with the kinds of questions you're gonna get. It's just half as long, but same everything else. You can take classes, which you can find on the GED website. You can buy um, Kaplan or other workbooks from Amazon or Walmart or your local bookstore. Um, you can watch YouTube videos like this one, but more specifically targeted to the stuff that you have trouble with in math. That's the good thing about taking this ready test is that it will tell you if you have trouble in, um, you know, basic math, what to focus on. And you can watch YouTube videos about that stuff. If you um, feel Energized by GED communities, you can join Facebook or Reddit or other um, online communities to support each other, um, and that's it. All right, so that's an overview of the test. Let's look at one specific typical question. I'll show it to you, and then the best practices, what you should do is pause the video and do your best to answer it. Um, and then I'll, because I'm not gonna go over the question itself, I'm just gonna explain the answer. There's our question. So what do you do? Um, this is an algebra question. Uh, it might not look like it, but it's that um, pigs in a blanket, corn dog sort of thing, where they've snuck uh, the math inside of this, this word problem. So we know that Jada has $12,000 and she's got 10,500 that's gonna be eaten up by the car. And she's, the question is, how many years will she have covered um, insurance-wise? So 
the first thing we need to do is figure out how much she's going to have left over from the insurance, from the purchase of the car, excuse me. So we have $12,000 to start with. We spend that much on a car. The difference, subtraction problem, is $1,500. So she's got $1,500 to spend on insurance. Okay. Well, insurance costs $400 a year. If you want to do it like old, there's two ways to do it. If you want to do it like super mathy, the right way to do it is this, that um, she's got $1,500 and there's a certain number of years that are going to be subtracted um, 400 each year. So it's 1,500 minus 400x is going to be greater than zero. She can't spend more than that. Her, she has to be left with some amount of money. Um, 1,500, you sort of solve it like you would a regular algebraic expression or equation. You just uh, subtract 400x from one side, so they're on different sides of the inequality, and then you divide both sides, the 400x by 400, and the 1,500 also by 400. That gives you this. This is sort of basic algebraic um, thinking. And it's probably not the way I would do the problem because it leaves you with 3.75 has to be greater than x. So x is less than this, which actually gives us 3 and 2. But really, we she's going to use all the years. She's not just going to do it for two years and have a lot of money left over. She wants to spend as much money as she can, have it, you know, as many years as she can. So the answer is going to be 3. But really, here's a, I don't know, a simpler way for me to think about it, um, which is... You get to this step here, which is $1,500. she has got $1,500 to spend on insurance. Well, the first year, she spends $400, okay? The next year, she also spends $400. That's up to $800, right? $400 plus $400. The third year, we're up to $1,200. She spent $400 three years. She doesn't have enough left over for year number four because year number four would cost her $1,600. So really all she's going to be able to spend on uh, insurance is $1,200. That gives us an answer of three years. She'll have some money left over, but not enough for the fourth year. This is the kind of like mathematical thinking that they're going to want you to do on the test. Um, if you can do it the second way, not the way that sort of is expressed here, you'll be in good shape. If you can do it this way, that's even better, but that's a little bit fancier if you ask me. All right, that is a basic introduction to the math test. There's plenty of places you can go from here to dig deeper. Good luck.